Hello and welcome to our fourth installment of our winter forecast. This one has been much anticipated and I'm very excited to bring you guys this one. This is our biggest update of all time and I have redrawn every single map by hand because so much has changed. So stay tuned for all of it. As always, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below and subscribe for more weather related content. I would also like to let you guys know that we uploaded a video that complements this one very well. It was our snowfall forecast. All right, and I'm going to put that on the top right corner of your screen today, and you can click that and watch it before you watch this one or after. It's up to you, but it complements it very nicely, and I highly recommend it. A lot of you enjoyed that one. Uh, if you like this video, by the way, and leave a comment down below with your location, I am going to respond to as many of those comments as possible with a custom forecast that goes into more detail for you guys with your specific location in mind. So be sure to smash that like button and leave that comment down below with your location and I will get back to as many of you as possible. Let's get straight into things. And first things first, we're taking a look here at our exciting precipitation forecast. I will let you guys know what has changed and hasn't changed since our most recent winter forecast as well by the way. Uh, on the western half of this, nothing has really changed below normal precipitation is very common in a La Nina, which is what we're expecting. So that is no surprise over there. But we have gone ahead and extended this through Texas, Oklahoma, and all the way, as you can see, to the East Coast, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and even well up into North Carolina as well. This is mostly due to that La Nina seeming more and more likely. We typically see less storminess in these regions in a La Nina and also some warmer than normal conditions. We'll get into that in a little bit. We also have a second layer of this below normal precipitation expected for California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and even New Mexico, where things will be even drier. This typical, typically for this area, there's a huge ridge, and it doesn't allow for any precipitation to head into this region in a La Nina, and that is, again, what we are expecting. Let's go ahead and promptly move into that above average precipitation region, though. And we have two of them, but the first one here is in the northwest. We can see that there is a storm track that will likely head in through Washington and Oregon and extend all the way into the north central United States and the North Plains. This is an area where typically in a La Nina we see that storminess head. In an El Nino, it just goes further south into California, Nevada, and Arizona. But in a La Nina, it goes way up above those regions into these areas. So it's easy to forecast the west as far as precipitation is concerned based on your ENSO, your El Nino or your La Nina. Those are the two controlling factors of that. We have a second layer of this as well up here for Washington and Oregon where things will be even stormier. Some of those storms won't make their way past the Rockies. Some of them will, uh, but all of them will head into Washington and Oregon uh, that head into this region. We have that second area of above average precipitation, as you can see, and that's going to be for the northeastern corner of the United States, as well as the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. This is another area that typically during a La Nina sees a lot of precipitation and storminess. This could lead towards a lot of snow as well, obviously. We have a second layer of this one as well, especially there for the Great Lakes, the northern Ohio Valley, and then the entire northeast. We'll touch on what that means for snowfall a little bit later on. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to get into that very exciting and very changed temperature forecast in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at those below normal temperature anomalies. And in the northwest there, we do have some below normal temperatures expected. That is mostly due to that storminess we're expecting for that region. If you see more clouds and more rain than normal, we do see some cooler temperatures because of that. And I do expect that in this case. The areas in the east, it's going to be mostly due actually to a trough being set up over the east. So that is two different types of cold. Both are equally cold. I hope that makes sense. It's like the causation is what's different, not the actual result. Although it can be colder in that kind of more eastern region there in the trough region, uh, because that's coming more from the Arctic regions as opposed to just the cloudiness and the storminess. Now this is our first layer. Let's move on to our second layer here. This is our kind of moderately below average temperature forecast region. And this is really where we're more confident in those below normal temperatures. You can see again, we have that still for Washington, still for the Northern Rockies, but especially there in the plains, through the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and then up through the Northeast. This has changed significantly. This used to dive down a lot more in the Eastern United States. And now we have a bit of a Southeast Ridge setting up. 
This is common in a La Nina, and that plays a huge factor uh, in why I decided to put this here. The models are kind of trending at it. We've seen it throughout the fall month so far, or the fall month. We've only had one fall month so far. Uh, but we've seen this, and you can expect those trends to somewhat continue usually. Now, we do have a third region of below normal temperatures as well. This is for Montana, and then you take that further eastward and further south through the, the northern plains there, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley. Now, Montana is mostly included because if you look at the past 20 years, a vast majority of the winters during the past 20 years have featured far below normal temperatures for this region, Montana specifically. It's an anomaly in itself, and it's very interesting to me, uh, but it's almost a safe bet to forecast far below normal temperatures for the state of Montana because kind of nowadays, like seven times out of 10, that is what's going to happen regardless of what you think. So that is a safe bet. So I included that. Otherwise, I would maybe not even extend it that far west, but that's just a safe bet. I, I mean, likely they are going to feature below normal temperatures. It's it's super interesting how it works. But yes, these areas are the, the most confident for me that they will be below normal temperatures and it could be even colder than the surrounding regions. For above normal temperatures, we have two separate regions, one here in the southwest, as you can see, where again, that ridge is gonna set up and that's what's gonna cause the precipitation to go around. You can almost picture where the ridge is gonna set up and where the trough is gonna set up, in my opinion, based on just looking at this. Trough in the east, ridge in the southwest. Easy enough, right? We have a moderately above average temperature region as well there in the southwest, and that is just where I'm more confident in those above average temperatures. We have a tiny, tiny region here as well with some above normal temperatures. And I just want you guys to look at Florida if you haven't noticed it already. There it is. Uh, and then it kind of goes up the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. That is the beginning of a southeast ridge. And now if I become more confident in a southeast ridge, I'm going to continue to push this further north and further westward from this point. Uh, but I'm kind of just introducing it in this edition of the winter forecast because I'm becoming confident that that could be a feature this winter. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move on towards the two most exciting things in this entire video, the snowfall chance forecast, which I'm sure all of you are looking forward to, and then also our very awesome overall forecast as well. So stay tuned for both of those exciting features in just a moment. Now, let's get straight into that snowfall chance forecast and how that works. I need to just explain it a little bit is this is just below normal or above normal snowfall chance. So let's say you have your typical snowfall chance based on like an 80 year average. We're going to go over if you will have a below normal chance of snowfall based on that average or above normal. So starting out with the below normal, we can see for the southwest, the south central and the southeast. You might notice this correlates directly with that precipitation and temperature forecast. And that's all it is. It's a combination of the temperature and the precipitation forecast. And we take that, mix it up and come up with if that's gonna to lead to above normal or below normal snowfall chance. It won't be perfect, but it's gonna be your best bet at kind of knowing what kind of odds you're looking at. Now, typically, obviously, Miami and Los Angeles don't see snowfall, but everybody has a chance. There might be a 0 0.0001 chance, but it's still a chance, so you will have less than that if you're in the below normal. Unfortunately, your chance was already pretty low, but it's gonna be even lower for these regions. Talking about the above normal snowfall chance. Now, this is going to be for all the areas that have above normal precipitation and below normal temperatures, or just one or the other. A lot of these regions just have one or the other, but we actually have a second shade, which is where we're more confident because these two regions actually feature below normal temperatures combined with above normal precipitation. That's going to be like the secret sauce for above normal snowfall chance. The above normal precipitation, below normal temperature combination leads to an even further above normal snowfall chance. And that's for the Pacific Northwest and the northeastern corner of the country, obviously. Now, to move on to that very exciting overall forecast here. And uh, we did a lot of work on this. Cool and stormy up there in the Northwest. Typical snow for the Rockies. It's always typical snow because they're going to see a ton of snow regardless. And I don't think you're going to notice if you saw 150 inches of snowfall or 175. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. So they're going to see their typical uh, monumental amount of snowfall there in the Rockies and surrounding mountain ranges. Warm and dry there for the Southwest. Very dry for even further into the Southwest. Again, Maybe like nearly no precipitation for this region during a La Nina. Cold and snowy just to the east of the Rockies there in areas like Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, 
and even a little bit in New Mexico. This is an area where this is pretty typical, but I think this year even more so, that's where that trough is going to head in. And you guys could have near normal precipitation to very slightly above normal. This is going to lead to a pretty active snowfall year, I think, for you guys. Up above, polar vortex. Again, we talked about how that Arctic air is going to make its way into the central and eastern United States, and I think it's going to be especially potent for this polar vortex region. Just to the south of there, Arctic blasts. This is where it's not going to quite be polar vortex level, um, but it will be Arctic air making its way down from time to time that will be very, very potent. We're talking 10 to 20 degrees below normal from time to time. We, saw, we see this every winter, but it could be more frequent this winter. Uh, active lakes this year, the lakes are very warm right now, and I think it, we, we talked about our winter thoughts just a few days ago. Uh, cold air could make its way in pretty early in November and December. If you haven't seen that video already, it is up on my channel. I uploaded it on Tuesday, September 28th, so go look for it. But November and December look like they could be cold already, and usually that's what we're looking for. Warm lakes with that very early cold air, because if it's kind of a gradual cool down throughout November and December, uh, the lakes cool down before the Arctic air makes its way over it, and that's what leads to kind of a below normal lake year. But I think this year has the recipes for a pretty active uh, lake year. Now, winter battle zone here for this pink region there, and this is always here. This is the area in between where you expect snowfall, all snowfall, and all rainfall. Uh, and it kind of leads towards this very messy zone. Mostly rainfall for you guys, obviously. But uh, there will be some snowfall, some ice, and, you know, some other mixed precipitations from time to time. Somewhat dry for the southeast and the Gulf states. These are areas that average getting a lot of precipitation. So even with the little bit of below normal precipitation, you're still going to see quite a lot. So that's why it's somewhat dry. It's going to be drier than normal, but it's still not going to be necessarily dry for the most part. Uh, we see in that kind of blue region there, worst of winter. This is where I expect the worst snowstorms to occur. I think Miller B nor'easters are possible. And all that means is it starts out as a clipper up there in Montana and the Dakotas. And it makes its way down kind of towards the middle eastern United States. Let's say Virginia and North Carolina. Then it makes its way up the coast. It can be inland, in which case the coast sees rain. Further inland areas see snowfall. And that's kind of what this worst of winter region would see their, their most snowfall in a storm track like that. But from time to time, it could make its way offshore, actually. And that's when this huge snowstorms region in the red, which is our last region, could see a lot of their snowfall when these Miller B nor'easters head further offshore. This is typical in a temperature and precipitation setup like we have this year, or like I'm expecting at least. So that is why I expect those Miller B nor'easters to be possible. We saw this in 2014 to 2015, for instance. So if you remember that winter, uh, that's when, you know, Boston and a lot of Massachusetts broke their snowfall record. So it, it, it happens in winters where we have setups like this. Anyway, this has been very exciting for me. I love making these for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This has, again, been our biggest update probably of all time because usually what I do is I, I draw the maps in my first winter forecast, and then throughout the year, I just alter that towards my thoughts. But this one, I think there's been so many huge changes in the expectations that I decided to redraw the entire thing from scratch. So we've kind of um, started over in a way there is some similarities so we're not completely thinking the opposite of what we were thinking before or anything but we've gone ahead and just made the biggest update ever and I'm very very excited about that I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, be sure to like the video leave a comment down, down below and subscribe again if you like it and leave a comment down below uh, I'll be you know responding to some of those with a custom forecast as well for today's confidence tab, considering we're still in the late, late, late portion of September, almost early October, we're still at a three out of six, which is where our confidence tab was in the last one as well. Uh, but we are still kind of in that kind of long range towards winter. So our confidence is still kind of medium. Uh, but once we head towards late November, we are going to have a finalized winter forecast that will likely look similar to this, but it will have some finalized updates that are going to be super accurate by that point because that's when winter will be in the short to medium range we'll have a much better picture of what to expect for today's patron highlight of the day i want to thank you all for supporting the channel but especially our platinum patrons john ben Bennett, james wade dovin nagel lola pan and donna carnes alongside our diamond patrons bill roberts marcus Connolly, noah harley michael cotalesa Catbite, charles finnett cindy klein mark j luke lego gary's john colisi dwight phelan and stephen grunenthal if you would like to be a part of this very exciting Patreon screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. This will be located next to the subscribe button if you're interested in joining our channel membership as well.
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video.